Hi, good morning. My name is Matt McNabb. I'm a principal at uh, Keras, a Washington uh, strategy firm. Um, I'm going to be a bit of a heretic uh, this morning and suggest to you that perhaps one of the most interesting technologies that we should be discussing and considering is, in fact, not the next smartphone app, but pen and paper. Here's why. One of the major thrusts of this community and communities like ours is the question of how do we enable local organizations to be able to capture, utilize, and share hyperlocal information. The challenge, of course, being that those with the most interesting information often lack the capacity to do so. So the question becomes really one of the, the challenge of the first mile, where you know, telecommunications and, and infrastructure challenges often question this issue of the last mile. For information exchange, we need to be concerned about where data originates. This is why I'm interested in paper. One of, the, one of the major challenges, of course, though, is that when you look at uh, where this data comes from, it often looks like this. Insights begin here. So how do you make this information actionable? How do you make it useful? How do you make it shareable? And how do you make it mappable? This is one of the big challenges that I think confronts this community. And I think one of the most interesting answers that the humanitarian community has come up with for this was walking papers, Stamen Designs walking papers. Simple idea, print out a paper map, mark it up with a pen or pencil, being able to then take the information that you've written on the, on the page and overlay it over OSM. It bridges the paper-based process with cloud-based visualizations. Interesting enough. So we worked with Stamen to develop sort of a next generation of that, which we call field papers. It's a very similar idea, just tried to, to make it a little bit simpler to use. Two major problems. Problem number one, what about structuring the information? How is it collected throughout an organization? Problem number two, that's great for editing OSM, but what about everything else? This is why we created something called Keras Geo. The basic premise of Keras Geo is to handhold one through the process of being able to collect, manage, use, and visualize information from, from paper through to the cloud. By being able to do this process, we've worked with the police, for example, in, in Monrovia to do effectively what you might consider the 21st century pushpin crime mapping. Very basic idea of being able to take the paper-based processes that exist within local organizations, connecting it to uh, cr uh, cl cloud-based analytics. In Aleppo, Syria today, we're also able to get hyper-local information on humanitarian conditions, the prices of bread, and so forth, and doing so without introducing technology that introduces risk. Um, equally, we're able to integrate it into traditional survey-based approaches, where effectively we're able to go out and conduct traditional surveys, but produce interesting visualizations without ever requiring a GIS person in between. I think this is, this is, for us, this is um, really representative of a broader challenge, which I would characterize as being the difference between uh, times of crisis and places of crisis. In times of crisis, the incentives for collecting, sharing, and utilizing information look a little bit different than you, when you go to local organizations to be able to uh, collect and utilize uh, hyperlocal information over time. The major difference between these approaches, I think, is largely that if you're looking for hyperlocal information over time in places of crises, you have to be very concerned about the ecosystem of how that information is generated. Why is it generated in the way that it is? And effectively, you have to bend technology to be useful directly to the local, base, the, the local workflows. This is, introduces some interesting challenges. In Northwest Pakistan, we found, for example, some years ago, um, this idea of the KPO the key punch operator. Here's the guy that uses the computer. It's different than you know, directly engaging with the uh, government administrator. Th there are interesting quirks that emerge, of course, within how organizations manage, collect, utilize, and share information. And I think it becomes incredibly important for us to understand the economy or even the ecology of information flows within these organizations. This is why we've applied effectively applied ethnography to be able to understand how information throws through, uh, flows through different organizations and map that, that flow, but also why it flows in the way that it does. Why is it that person A pushes, pushes data to person B? But I think one of the big challenges and the big challenge that I would push to you uh, for the future is how do you drive local value? It's not enough just to go and collect data for your use. How do you enable local organizations to be able to uh, use that information for themselves? 
This is the idea that I would pose to you is software as a service in the first mile. In the beginning of next year, February 1 of next year, we're going to be launching a new firm called First Mile Geo just to focus on this specific kind of challenge. How do you drive local value in the first mile? If you're interested, send me a note. Thanks.